So now the second part of the criteria for being able to apply the mean value theorem, we need it to be differentiable, this function h, on the open interval a, b. Well, now we can just apply the linearity of differentiation. So the linearity of differentiation tells us that if you have two functions, f and g, that are both differentiable at some point, then if you take a linear combination of those two functions, i.e. some constant times this function f, plus some constant which is the minus times this, um, times the function g, then that linear combination of the two differentiable functions is also differentiable at that point p, and its derivative will just be the constant in front of f times the derivative of f at the point p, plus the constant in front of g times the derivative of g at the point p. So we can therefore conclude that at every point where f and g are both differentiable, the h is also going to be differentiable. And since they're both differentiable everywhere on the open interval a, b, we can hence conclude that h will also be differentiable everywhere on the interval a, b. So writing that out, h is differentiable everywhere on this interval, and h prime of x, the derivative at any x in this interval, will be equal to f prime of x times g of b minus g of a, minus g prime of x times f of b minus f of a. So just basic differentiation applied here. So now all we need to do is apply the mean value theorem to our function h. So applying the mean value theorem says that there will exist a c in the open interval a, b, such that if you look at what the derivative of h at c is equal to, it's equal to the difference quotient for the function h from a to b, so h of b minus h of a over b minus a. So now all we need to do is just plug in what h prime and h are in terms of f and g, our original two functions. Before we do h prime of c, plugging this bit in, let's actually firstly study h of b minus h of a. And I've written this out here in a way that hopefully is going to save us a little bit of time. So h of b minus h of a, all I'm doing is going up here to the definition of h, and I'm just plugging in x is equal to b and x is equal to a, and then I'm subtracting those two apart. So this bit that I've got here is actually h evaluated at b. So I've put in b here, and we've got f of b times g of b minus g of a, that constant. And then here we've got minus g of b times f of b minus f of a. So that is just h of b here, and I've just put a bracket there with the minus, but that's that bit, h of b. Now, minus h of a, this is the first part of h of a, so plugging in a here, we'll get f of a, so we've got minus, because we're subtracting it off, so we've got minus f of a times, again, this constant g of b minus g of a. And then, this is the second part, which would be we'd have minus minus, so it would be a plus, but actually I've put it inside this bracket, so I've got the minus out here, and then the second minus is here, so it still does have this minus in front of it, but of course this minus would cons cancel with this minus to give the overall plus that you would get because you're subtracting that minus bit off. Um, so here we've got g of a times the constant f of b minus f of a, and the reason I've written it out in this way is so that you can realise that these two bits factor together we can pull this constant out here. This constant is common to both of these and so it'll just be f of b minus f of a times this constant. Similarly here they have a common constant which is the f of b minus f of a so we can pull that out and we'll get that it's g of b minus g of a times f of b minus f of a. So you can see that this bit here is exactly the same as this bit here. They're both f of b minus f of a times g of b minus g of a and then we've got plus there, and then we've got minus here, so this is all going to cancel, and this comes out as zero, so we've got zero here, zero divided by whatever b minus a is, is still zero, so this side all just reduces to zero. So rereading what our mean value theorem now says for this function h, it says there exists a c in the interval a, b, such that h prime of c is equal to zero, and now all I need to do is plug in what h prime is in terms of my original functions f and g, which is written here, and hopefully you can see the formula of the generalized mean value theorem is going to drop out. So writing out what h prime of c is, I get that there must exist a c in the open interval a, b, such that f prime at c, so I've just plugged in for x c here, 
times the constant g of b minus g of a minus g prime evaluated at c, again I've just substituted in x is equal to c, times the constant f of b minus f of a must equal zero. So there must exist a c in that interval such that this is satisfied. And you can see that if I just take this to the other side, I've then got the initial statement that I was calling the generalized mean value theorem. So coming back up here, I'll remind you that this is what the generalized mean value theorem says, that if you've got functions f and g, on the closed interval AB that are real valued such that F and G are both continuous everywhere over the closed interval AB and differentiable everywhere over the open interval AB, that there must exist a C in the open interval AB such that F prime at C times G of B minus G of A is equal to G prime at C times F of B minus F of A. And we've seen now how you prove that. You create this function H defined like so, and then you can see that that function also has to be continuous everywhere on the closed interval AB and differentiable everywhere on the open interval AB. And then you just apply the mean value theorem to that function H. And it ends up being that this thing here, the derivative of H at C is actually equal to zero because of the fact that this function, if you evaluate it at B, is equal to the function evaluated at a, i.e. the difference between them, h of b minus h of a, is equal to zero. So it's effectively, the mean value theorem effectively becomes Rolle's theorem in that case and says that there is a point um, c in the open interval a, b where the derivative of the function is equal to zero. So we'll end there. That's the generalized mean value theorem. It is a simple corollary of the mean value theorem and we will use it occasionally in future proofs.